Pretty good week for Apple finally getting in the AI mix and holding on to yesterday's rally today as everything else drops in the mega camp world. Joining us, Zeno Mercer is a senior research analyst at Vetify. Uh, Zeno, good to have you here this afternoon. Uh, is it helping the uh, broader market folks' favorite funds to see Apple holding up finally? Well, I mean, given its weighting, certainly it's a it's a positive trend line versus uh, Apple's performance here to date. So, um, yeah, their M4 chips, the robotics, I think people are maybe getting more excited versus uh, some of the pain points or, or outlooks they're having in their, their more traditional businesses and services and, and their iPhones globally. Did Apple get left out when people were building these AI chat GPT uh, ETFs and indexes and stuff. I mean, that's what you guys specialize in Vetify, right? The, uh, the indexes, the ETF world. Uh, is Apple in these products? Um, no, Apple's currently not in these products. Okay, I mean, that's what on, I thought. On one, yeah, right. So uh, they're not necessarily a robotics player. Uh, they're a consumer-focused uh, product and service. Um, you know, from an AI standpoint, uh, you know, you could say that a lot of their products have AI enabling and, and supporting this entire supply chain and how things are put together. But um, it's not necessarily like an AI driven. It's very consumer driven um, and, and branding driven company. Um, it's also very much held in most of the traditional industries. So I think it's an area or a company that is is maybe already overexposed uh, in many people's portfolios. Mm. Um, you're right. You know, we've been looking at the robotics market uh, since 2013, and um, we're we're kind of entering this this renaissance moment where uh, lots of major players, from Nvidia to Apple, are starting to enter the foray of exploring the robotic space. Um, which is a really uh, pivotal moment and, and a paradigm shift from uh, more traditional markets. Um, so this is like, why now? I mean, I think it's obvious we're seeing generative AI uh, providing upskilling and training and, and creating um, awareness to developers and these big players that you can actually start to build these technologies now. It's going to take a while for them to become in our households, but um, for companies that have been like, like Apple, Google, et cetera, that have been benefiting from this wave of smartphone uh, growth over the last decade and the services growth alongside of that, they're going to need to look to new markets to continue that growth that, that people expect from, from them. Okay. Yeah, they have been kind of curiously behind on this matter, uh, especially considering they were uh, really early on with Siri and voice uh, AI and stuff. So it's been kind of curious. How much flexibility did these funds have? Like if tomorrow Apple, you know, puts out another announcement, which they kind of have been that they're going to continue building this stuff. I mean, they're going to use Alphabet. It seems like maybe they're going to use some Alphabet's AI. Can these uh, indexes recalibrate? How much flexibility is there to adapt it? into what is, I'm being told, like an early, you know, takeoff of this industry. Right. Uh, I would say, I mean, it depends on the index or strategy. You have some that rebalance yearly. You have others that rebalance quarterly. We rebalance quarterly on our end, so we are watching and adapting to any changes, both okay. positively or negatively, regulatorily. Like, if you have companies that are saying really big uh, negative impact from regulations around how they, they monetize data or AI or things like that, I mean, those are things that we consider. So we look at both upside and downside. Um, but I would say different different products and different platforms out there will have different flexibility to react to that, whether it's Apple or, or even smaller players that are lesser known. I would say a lot of the, the companies in the robotic space are, are companies that most people have no idea exist. They, they operate in the back end. Um, I think the way that many are looking at this is that you're going to see you know, new players come in and then you're going to see the old guard, these companies that are in these traditional manufacturing, industrial logistics and all these different different forays and, and, and also some of the enabling technologies such as actuation and computer vision and sensing. I know we had a LiDAR company on earlier today. There's a lot of different ways to to enable these robots to to navigate and work and operate in the real world, both from a training and a live inference standpoint. Um, so I would expect a rising tide to lift all boats here for, for companies that are leaders um, in the robotic space. Um, and I would expect more M&A, more partnerships, and overall massive uh, acceleration of interest and in, in actual deployments of robots hmm. over the coming years. Well, if that's the case, and we are early in the stages, I would think an annual rebalance would be way too seldom uh, if for a fund that needs to kind of keep up with fast developments. That would be my kind of two cents on that subject. Which funds do you think are doing a good job? Uh, what should we be watching? Any favorites? 
Yeah, I mean, you've got, I mean, we've got our robo index, uh, which is tracked with products globally. Um, you know, companies like Bots and NAIQ from Global X offer, you know, offer kind of uh, different approaches to to getting access to the market. Um, there's, there's, you know, plenty of players there. I mean, some people believe they have access to, you know, AI and robotics, for example, and in other plays like the queues or something. But, um, you know, it's really a, a much smaller portion, and you have uh, concentration risk. Uh, to those big players. So, I mean, if you're trying to actually get global diversification away from that, you might want to look to other products that, that are out on the market. Okay. All right. Uh, good a couple ones for us to watch here. I like the thought about the uh, sector being, uh, including some of the kind of back of house mechanics that don't get as much attention. It seems like that's a theme maybe that uh, has gone underappreciated so far. Certainly. Um, and, and, you know, so it's, it's kind of like we're going to see robotics as a space go from more of a picks and shovel to the modern world to um, actually becoming more uh, products and services themselves. So uh, there should be massive uh, TAM acceleration uh, and expansion over the coming decade as, as more use cases appear in services, production, healthcare, uh, supporting the aging population. There's tons of uh, drivers such as the energy transition as well. So you have this convergence and perfect storm for a really big growth story here, especially after uh, what many have considered and, and pretty obviously has been tough year, uh, trailing, twa uh, cl uh, trailing 12 months in the robotic space with a little bit of overexposure overall in industrial markets to China. The reshoring initiatives have been a little bit slower to take off due to some regulatory and just piecing things together. So those are starting to clear up. Manufacturing construction is at all time high in the United States. And overall, we're starting to see PMI pick up, which, which supports the consumables mm -hmm. angle too. Yeah. So overall, things are really in a strong position, but uh, the market's still looking at it from a more traditional lens. Um, for example, our robo index is still trading kind of at its long term average of 3.5 times uh, forward EV sales. Hmm. So people are still looking at robotics from kind of just like the classic market analytics. And we expect, you know, kind of similar to how NVIDIA got morphed into an AI story. Mm -hmm. Robotics is the physical embodiment of AI and automation. And increasingly, it will um, help build new robots and it will right. help. Uh, encourage the de deployment and you know it's like hey what's the best way to solve this problem it'll increasingly be robotics and we have a major labor shortage in manufacturing logistics and and, and even healthcare and we believe that um you know there's regulatory support and and just a dire need to get this okay. uh, larry fink yeah. for example recently called out uh, retirement um and all these pain points with inflation and rising cost and and this is really the solution here. I mean, you can financially engineer and support it, but the other angle is just making the world a better place through more automation and improving the quality of life through uh, adoption of these technologies. Intuitive Surgical, top holding uh, there, uh, Rockwell, Zebra. So you've got a lot of like, it really is kind of the physical. This is literally kind of like the beep boop robot stuff as opposed to like the chat uh, uh, stuff that's been blowing up. Zeno, thanks uh, for the analysis and uh, interesting nuanced take there on the subject. Appreciate it. Thank you. Zeno Mercer, Senior Research Analyst at Vetify.